scripture tonight, and uh, I don't know what we're going to uh, do uh, as far as preaching. I may not preach very good tonight, but I just got one scripture. Uh, Judges chapter 3 and uh, uh, verse 31 and uh, I don't know we'll just have to see what's in store for us tonight Amen I have preached to you from this chapter 3 in the foregoing part of this chapter about Ehud and uh, how he was left handed and with a dagger he uh, delivered the children of Israel uh, from the uh, Moabites but verse 31 just one verse sandwiched in between uh, the victory of Ehud over Moab and the children of Israel in chapter 4 in another situation. But, and after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. Amen. You may be seated. This doesn't look like much of a weapon. But be, behave yourself tonight or I'll throw this at you. <clears throat> Amen. But uh, an ox goad really is uh, over twice this long. It was eight feet long thereabouts and two inches in diameter. Probably out of iron. And uh, it had a, a flat chisel-like on one end and a sharp point on the other. And... Uh, they used that when the oxen would either get out of place and they'd punch the oxen back in line or if it got too slow, they would punch it. <clears throat> and on the other end was a chisel-like instrument and then with that they would take all the clay that was uh, 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 accumulated on the plowshare and uh, or weeds or clods of dirt and they would scrape that off now that's a very crude instrument to go to war with and uh, I thought today amen my wife uh, when I brought this in the house she said <clears throat> amen you're going to preach about fighting with beans no that might come another time <clears throat> but uh I, I do want to talk to you for a few minutes about this ox goat. Amen. Now, I want to talk probably more about the driver of the ox than the goat itself. Amen. This, this, this was a critical situation in the lives of the children of Israel. They were in sore need of a deliverer. Uh, they were completely at the mercy of their old enemy, the Philistines. And uh, matter of fact, uh, they were at their mercy completely. And uh, through uh, persistent raids by the Philistines when the children of Israel would plant their crops. And uh, <clears throat> y'all listen to me now. Amen. And start gathering them in the harvest. Then the Philistines would raid into their country and uh, take all their harvest back to the Philistine country. And if they had a herd, a small herd or a large herd, when it was almost slaughter time, the Philistines would come down into the children of Israel's land like birds after a prey and they would take all of those herds back to the Philistines. Amen. And uh, uh, they, these people were in dire want because they had little food to eat because the Philistines gathered it all. They had little uh, meat to eat because the Philistines were oppressing them. 
They lived in constant fear. Amen. Here, I, I, uh, I was reading about this situation, and even their highways had grown up. Amen. With all kinds of uh, uh, weeds and, and, and trees even growing up in the highways because the people were scared or afraid to travel the roads because of the bands of the Philistines. Amen. But in the wake of this calamity came, amen, uh, quite naturally, the yet heavier one of their utter discouragements. I want to tell you, the devil would like to keep you discouraged. Amen. The people saw no chance of fighting back for their liberty and freedom. Amen. Their conquerors had seen to it that uh, they had compelled the children of Israel to give up all their weapons of war. Matter of fact, Amen. History tells us that there was not a blacksmith left in the land at all. So they had no means of making weapons. Amen. I want to talk to you for a little while. You can use what you got. Amen. You don't have to be a preacher of a great intellect and smooth words and swaying, amen, uh, uh, messages to get you Amen. Out of the uh, 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 hand of the enemy. All you need is to use what God has given to you. Somebody say amen. I want to tell you, I don't know about y'all, but there has been times in my life that I was down just like some of y'all have been down. Amen. And I found out that driving down the road sometime, amen, all by myself. Hello, listen now. Praise God, just break out singing. No congregation, nobody there listening. But it seems like that a song just swelled up inside. Amen. And the more I sang, the better I felt. Praise God. Amen. So sometimes you just do, you need to use what you've got to use. Somebody said, I want to sing in the church. Amen. You don't have to always sing in the church. Amen. Sing in the car. Sing in the kitchen. Sing at the wood pile. Amen. Sing on the job. Somebody said they make fun of me. Amen. So. Amen. Oh, just, just use what you've got as unto the Lord. Amen. They were without any chance of making any type of weapon. They had no blacksmith. They had lost confidence in themselves. Amen. And worst of all, amen, they had lost faith in God. And they were down, down, down. I want to tell you, it's one thing to lose confidence in yourself, in your own ability, but it's another thing to lose faith in God. Amen. You lose faith and confidence in yourself, but whenever you lose faith in God, you're in deep trouble. Come on here. And the devil will see to it. He's going to beat you while you're down. Somebody say amen now. Amen. Ah, but you see, deliverance came to the children of Israel. Amen. Ah, amen. From the least expected source that you could think of. I mean, who help me here. Amen. Yeah, this, this, this man that God used, Shamgar. Amen. He was not a man of position. Nobody knew anything about him. Amen. He was not of any royal blood. Amen. He had never had a single day of military training. He didn't. Come on here. Amen. He didn't know much about fighting. Amen. Help me here. He was a farmer. Amen. And that's all he knew to do. But he was good at it. Whatever you can do, be the best at it. Amen. If all you can do is hum, praise God, come on, seal, hum for me tonight. Amen. If all you can do is hum, be a good hummer. Praise God. Woo. Amen. If all you can do is whistle, be a good whistler. Praise God. 
Amen. I forget where we were somewhere in revival this past uh, couple of years. I can't remember now. Amen. And there was a man in the church. He didn't have any talent as far as talents is concerned. And uh, uh, he couldn't, amen, he really couldn't sing. Amen. He couldn't play an instrument. But he was one of the best whistlers you ever heard. When while everybody else was singing, amen, he was whistling. Praise God. If that's all you can do, whistle. But let the devil know that you got an ox goad. Hey man, that you're going to do battle with the devil if it's nothing more than whistling. Whistle your way. Hey man, out from under the hand of the devil. Oh, I'm feeling better myself. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. This was an ox driver. Amen. That God chose to work deliverance for the children of Israel. Amen. He he got to the point after a while, he was so aggravated with himself as well as the children of Israel. He was down. Amen. He had little or no food. Amen. He was discontented. Amen. He was more than just restless. He was discontented and aggravated. Are y'all still with me? Amen. And and I see folks come to church. Amen. They always want to be entertained. They want to be cooed to. Amen. They want to be, come on here. Amen. They want to be sung to. They want to be played to. They want to be entertained. Amen. If you don't do that, they're going to leave and go somewhere else where somebody will entertain them. But I want to tell you, entertainment will not get you the victory. Sometimes you need an ox goad. Amen. You can use that. Praise God for the glory of the Lord. I'm feeling better here. Amen. Shamgar. Amen. Was so discontent and sick. Amen. That he himself was so cowed down and whipped and humiliated. Amen. In the inner rage. Amen. From the inside of him about the condition of his own people that were enslaved. Are y'all still with me? Amen. I think sometimes out there in the field, he just get to thinking about it with that amen ox goat in his hand and he'd clench his fist around that ox goat. Amen. And say, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm tired of the oppression. I'm tired of the devil. Amen. Taking our food and our possessions and our houses and land. Say, saints of God, woo, I'm feeling like preaching here. Amen. If you get up out of your sewer to spawn and get discontent with yourself, being down in the dumps, amen, and discouraged, get up. Use an ox gold if you have to. Amen. He was filled with a burning discontent against things as they were. Seemed like there was no hope. Amen. I've been waiting on you to get here. Seems as though, amen, he was discontent with himself. Amen, he was clenched fist. Amen. I want to tell you, it's bad to be whipped. Amen, by somebody else. But then to be whipped and just glad you are whipped, that's kind of foolish. Somebody listening say amen. Amen, amen, amen. To be in the prison house. Amen. Be in prison for so long that you got used to it. Amen. And you really don't care whether you get out or liberty or free or not. Amen. There are people in our culture today. Amen. When they got out of jail, amen. They done some crime so they could get back in jail. Amen. That's kind of foolish to me. Amen. If I get out of jail of the devil, I ain't not going back into his prison house. Praise God. Somebody say hello. Amen. It's one thing to be in prison, but it's a worse thing to be glad you're in there. Amen. He 
in that far country where the prodigal son was, amen, the only reason he went back to father's house was because he got dissatisfied with where he was. As long as you're happy in your condition, you'll never be no better. You'll never get out of the hog pen. You'll never get out of the prison. You'll never get out from under the heavy hand of the Philistine. You'll never get away from that clinch that the devil's got on your life. But if you get to where you're tired of being oppressed by the devil, if you're tired, come over here, if you're tired of always having temptation pulling at you to where you can't hardly resist it, if you ever get, am I doing all right? If you ever get tired, hey man, of the way your life is spiritually, praise God, grab an ox gold. Hey man, say I'm coming out of here fighting. Hey man, I'm not going to let the devil, hey man, have my victory. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the Lord or in the world. Hey man, praise God. Well, 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 I'm going to have to hurry here. Amen. To be a spiritual pygmy, a moral dwarf, that's one thing. But to come to the place where you persuade yourself, that's the best you can do. You'll never be no better than that. Zane, you can do better. <sighs> Get you an ox. Ox gold. Amen. I have heard Zane sing. It's been a long time, but I have heard. Amen. I don't know if I've ever heard Seal sing, but I have heard Zane sing. But it's been a long time, Zane. Amen. Sing to yourself going down the road. Amen. About victory in Jesus. Praise God, get tired. Amen of the honky tonks. Amen. Songs of the devil. Amen. Is brought into your ears. Amen. Say, I'm coming out here. Philistine and no Philistine. I'm going to sing about the amazing grace of God. I'm going to come on here. Amen. I may not sing in church. I may not sing to my wife or husband. Amen. But I'm going to sing to myself. Amen. The greatest the Lord and greatly to be praised. Uh, I read a story. Amen. Some time ago now, and some of y'all might have heard it. It's an old story of the eagle that was hatched out. Amen. Along with some chicks in the barnyard. Amen. And those fellow chickens laughed at him in the barnyard because he was so awkward, brownish in color. Amen. He looked very funny indeed. And he tried to pick up some little grain in the barnyard with his crooked hook bill. Amen. He seemed to those strange chickens Amen. This bird is out of place. I know he was hatched in the nest where we were. Are y'all say with me? Amen. And, and, and as good as to say, he seemed to himself yet more strangely out of place. Amen. So he stood day after day, the picture of discontent, the embodiment of wretchedness, isolated from the rest of the amen, chickens in the barnyard. He's an oddball. Ha! Ah, but one, amen, sunshiny morning, amen, there came in the far off distant sky a speck. Amen. Something was flying in their direction. Amen. And when it got closer, amen, there was a strange wild call. Amen. From the sky of that, 
Amen. Speck way up yonder. Amen. This this ungainly bird in the barnyard. This ridiculous chick. Amen. That had been laughing stock of the barnyard. Amen. Looked up as if he understood that cry. Praise God. Somebody say amen. Amen. And that call came again. And it came again. And it came near. And then all of a sudden, praise God, fire seemed to suddenly glow in the lackluster eyes of that barnyard fowl. And the chicks stood back in wonder and amazement. What is going on? And this odd looking bird, amen, screamed out in answer to that fowl that was flying in there. Are y'all still with me? Praise God. And the bird spread his brownish, amen, brown wings and his circle high as he flapped his wings. He realized he didn't belong in that barnyard. Praise God. I want to tell you, we are in the world, but we are not of this world. We've got a higher calling. Amen. There's a call going to come after a while. Amen. The world will never hear it, but every child of God that's in tune has got their ears and their eyes tuned toward the heavenly world. And after a while, we're going to say goodbye, world. Goodbye. Amen. We're going to a better place. Amen. Where there's glory and joy and happiness in the Holy Ghost. That bird in the barnyard could never be content scratching among the filth of the barnyard. Why be content with the worst when you can have the best? You're being cheated every day. Every day you live, the devil's got you cornered up. Amen. And he's got you in bondage. And you know you can do better. And you really sometimes want to do better. But the devil's got you cowered down. He's got you depressed. He's got you discouraged. He's telling me that you that you can never be anything more than what you are. Bless your heart, find you in the ox gold. Praise the Lord and come out fighting. Amen. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. I don't know about you, but I can tell you to even tonight, some of y'all are being cheated. Every day you live, you're cheated because the devil's got you pressed down. Amen. Got you under his thumb. Amen. And he's pushing downward on you. And you got discouraged and you about thought about giving up and quitting. Amen. But find you an ox gold. Amen. Say, I'm coming out fighting. Amen. Greater is he that is in you than they that are in the world. You can be an overcomer. Shamgar was a man of faith. He could see the difficulties as well as the men whom he lived with. He could realize the strength of the Philistines as well as the Philistines and realize their own strength. He could realize the weakness of the Israelites. He understood quite well Amen. That there was no weapon to fight with. What are you going to do now, Shamgar? You have no sword. The only sword Shamgar have, has seen in years and years was in the hands of the Philistines. Amen. Come on here. Amen. The, the, the only weapons. Amen. That he ever saw. Amen. The gift difficulties. Amen. Were not all that Shamgar saw. He knew something about the history of the children of Israel. Are y'all still with me? He knew how God had made bare his arms for their deliverance from the Egyptian bondage. If God could do that through one man like Moses, amen, he can do it today for me too. I don't know how I got 
tired. Come on, y'all still with me. I got tired of the devil telling me, I can't do nothing. You'll never amount to nothing. You'll just be, hey man, what you are now. Discouraged and disgruntled. Hey man, down in the dumps. Hey man, but my dear friend, if you can't get a hold of a sword, and you can't get a hold of a spear, and you can't get a hold of a shield, hey man, bless God, get a hold of an ox goad. Hey man, you can come out swinging with the victory in your soul. Hey man, the Bible said when the enemy comes in like a flood, Spirit of the Lord do what? Lift up our standard against him. When the enemy comes upon you instead of running, hey man, Shamgar stood his ground. You can hear that ox goad. Crack the skulls. Hey man, of those Philistines. Hey man, I ain't gonna hurt you, Brother Silas. <laughs> hey, praise God. You can, you can hear him and the Philistines cry. He got me. Hey, man, and fall over. Praise God. 600 Philistines, hey, man, slew with one man and one ox dude. That doesn't seem like much of a weapon. Hey, man, but use what you got. If you can't sing and you can't whistle and you can't play music, you can pray. Praise God. Amen. Some of my best men. Prayer meetings is all by myself. When nobody else is around and nobody hears me. Amen. Telling God how bad things are. Amen. But I'm telling you sweet victory comes after a while. Somebody say praise the Lord. I remember, amen, it, it was a while after me and my wife were married and things weren't going too well and we was having to spend. Some of y'all might have heard me tell it. I'm going to tell it again for those that haven't. Amen, things weren't going too well as far as, as, far as the ministry is concerned and we were having to live with her mom and daddy and they're great people. They were great people. They loved me like a son. Amen. And, uh, amen. Uh, revivals seem like I couldn't preach my way out of a paper bag. Y'all think I'm a bad preacher now? You ought to hurt me then. Amen. I mean, it's pitiful. Didn't have any revivals. Nobody called. Nobody seemed like wanting to hear me preach. And about 3 o'clock one morning, amen, I got tired of it. Praise God. And I rolled out of bed and went out in the backyard. Amen. It wasn't very much of a yard, really. Amen. But uh, Daddy Roy, amen, had planted a few trees. A few fruit trees in the backyard. Hey man, it wasn't over a half an acre of land, if that much. Hey man, he had plum trees and peach trees and I can't remember everything that he had up there. Hey man, I got tired of being beaten down by the devil. Hey man, I went out in the backyard at three o'clock in the morning. Hey man, my wife was still in bed sleep. Hey man, my in-laws were asleep. Hey man, but I was doing battle with the devil. Praise God. Are y'all still with me? Hey man, I got out underneath that old plum tree. I got me two or three sticks. Hey man, and a rock and a, uh, four or five bricks. He made me a little seat to sit on. And I sat down underneath that plum tree. And I got to talking to God. I told God how bad everything was. How pitiful a preacher I was. Are y'all still with me? Didn't have no place to go to preach. And I'm just down and I'm going to quit preaching. Hey man, and it dawned on me. Why don't you just thank God for being saved? Praise God. Hey Amen. And, and all of a sudden when I got through telling God how bad I was and how bad everything was, hey Amen. I said, Lord, I do thank you that you saved me in Leesburg, Virginia when I was just a teenage boy. And oh God, you fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. And I thank you, Lord. Hey Amen. That even one day, praise God, you call me to preach the gospel.
gospel. Hey, 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 hey. And the glory of the Lord came down at 3 o'clock in the morning. Amen. In the backyard under a plum tree. Amen. And for saying, you know, I got me an ox gold. Amen. And I come out of there shouting. Amen. I kicked the stones and the sticks in every direction. And I shouted out among the plum trees. I want to tell you, if you have to, find you an ox gold. Come out of there fighting for the Lord. I'm getting ready to close. I found a little illustration. Amen. This afternoon that I'd used many times, many, many times, hundred times, I guess, through the years. I got some old papers back there I wrote things on in the, my study in the briefcase. And I was back there reading some of them. Yesterday, I believe it was, or the day before, and my wife said, boy, that's an old one. I can tell by the writing, it's old. And on the back side of what I had written on, amen, was a picture of the church we built in Texas, and my picture up in the corner. She said, who is that guy? Help me here now. I was plundering through some of my old stuff. Amen. And I come across this little article after Commodore McDonough in the early years of our American history. Amen. He had a great victory over the British fleet on Lake Champlain. Amen. The uh, commander of the British land forces, Sir George Provost, sent to him to inquire the secret of your success. Commodore McDonough, how did you win this battle? Amen. He replied, writing on the same sheet that the inquiry came to him on, he turned it over and wrote, Hard fighting, sir. Hard fighting. <laughs> Somebody say amen. He pushed on the battle through, amen, and, 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 and though his ship, the Saratoga, was riddled with shot twice on fire and in a sinking condition, amen, he was twice knocked down and reported killed, amen, but every time he revived and returned to the gun and sighted the military guns until victory was won. I've been knocked down several times. Amen. You've been knocked down several times. And you can roar in your own self-pity and say, you poor little thing. Hey, my wretch, you can find your knox goat. Praise God. And you can say, devil, I'm not giving up and I'm not quitting. I'm coming out of here. Amen. Come on here. Shamgar, come on, come on here. He might have thought, amen, I might be found dead. Amen from the wounds of the Philistines. But I'm going to fight. Amen. And I'm going down fighting. Amen. Come on here. He might have said, I'll go home with wounds from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. But nobody would be able to say I was a coward. Amen. So he took an ox dog. That's all he had. And said, I'm coming out of here, you Philistines. Amen. You enemies of the Lord. Amen. Get ready. And he slew 600 valiant men. Come on, Marcia. Praise God. You can stay there where you are if that's where you want to stay. In the mud hole. Self-pity. You can't do no better. You pitiful little thing. The devil's got you in a corner. Or else you can find you in the ox goad of some sort. Amen. It may not be a sword. It may not be a shield or a spear. But you've got something that you can use to come out from under this bondage of the devil. Everybody stand. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. I think we ought to come pray. 
Amen. If the devil's got you in a corner and cowed down, and you feel like you'll never be any more than what you are, Amen. Realize one thing. I'm a child of the king. And I'm not going damn defeated. Come on, let's pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Keep holding on to that nail-scarred hand. I'm not giving up, no, I'll keep holding on. Would you mind to tell me there's been something bothering me? Why is that old Satan? He just won't let God's children be. You see, he is purpose to get right in the way and turn us from the way of life and lead our souls astray i'm not giving up i'm not turning round by the grace of god i'll wear a shining crown someday i'll keep holding on to that nail scarred hand i'm not giving up I'll keep holding on I'm not giving up Not turning round By the grace of God I'll wear a shining crown someday I'll keep holding on To that nail-scarred hand I'm not giving up I'll keep holding on Walking through a valley through this veil of tears times i've given question if my lord was near many times that old tempter says why not turn around you can't get any farther you're just losing ground but i'm not giving up i'm not turning around but the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday. I'll keep holding on. A nail scarred hand, I'm not giving up. I'll keep holding on. Oh, would you mind to tell me does something bother me? Why is that old Satan? He just won't let God's children be. You see, he's purposed and determined to get right in the way and turn us from the way of life and lead your soul astray. I'm not giving up. I'm not turning around. But the grace of God, I'll wear a shiny crown someday. I'll keep holding on. To the nail scarred hand, I'm not giving up. I'll keep holding on. Oh, I'm not giving up. I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, a will a shining crown someday. I'll keep holding on. Nail scarred hand, not giving up. I'll keep holding on. I've been walking through a valley, through these relatives. Times I've even questioned 
If my love was near, many times that old tempter says, why not turn around? You can't get any farther. You're just losing ground. I'm just giving up. I'm not turning round. By the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday. Keep holding on. The nail scarred hand. I'm not giving up. I'll keep holding on. I'm not giving up. Now turning around by the grace of God, I'll wear a shining crown someday. I'll keep holding on to that nail scarred hand. I'm not giving up, I'll keep holding on. Not giving up.